So how can this help when you're building and making this? That's what we're gonna do today. We are going to attempt to complete some special projects with the Falcon 2 laser from Creality to help the construction of our aircraft. I have a couple cool projects in mind, so stick around guys, and let's take a look at what we're doing. So first thing we're gonna do revolves around the Demon Cortex Pro Gyro. Now on some airframes, like big, open, cavernous airframes, like a Hawk as an example, my Kinetics. When you install a gyro like this, there's some resonance, it's not vibration, it's resonance that affects the tail or rudder of the aircraft. So generally what we would do in this case is a very easy solution of making a foam enclosure. Now the foam enclosure is not getting rid of uh, vibrations. What it's doing is it's getting rid of resonance. And that resonance really affects the Cortex Pro, especially on the rudder or vertical stab. So what, what I've done on previous aircraft is taken this dense foam uh, that comes in some of the Jetty products and I've made a little what uh, some people call a hush box. Slips over top of the gyro, has a couple slits in there to run your cables through. I've also gone as far as putting a little hole in there with, uh, filled with hot glue so I can still see the LED uh, and know what color the LED is. So I've made them before just using a razor knife, but why not use a cool tool like the Creality Falcon 2 laser since we've got it. So that is gonna be project number one, is make a hush box for Cortex. Now we still have to glue those together obviously, but all of our dimensions and cuts and everything should be perfect. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find out with the machine how much power we need to use to get through this foam and if we actually can even get through this foam. I'm assuming we can because we've cut wood with this thing. All right, so the foam I make these hush boxes out of is 9.7 or 10 millimeter foam. And again, this is just what comes with some of the products. So I like to reuse it because it's really nice quality stuff. So we've got some of the material laid up on our laser machine and we've come into here into light burn and we've gone into the material test generator. So what we're doing is we're doing one row by 10 squares. I'll show you what that test looks like. So this is what's gonna happen is it's gonna go up in power at 600 millimeters, millimeters per minute. And we're gonna see what it's gonna take to cut cleanly through that foam. So all we do, frame it out, get our material lined up, hit start, and the test is run. Okay, so we've popped our little squares out here and let's take a closer look at this stuff. So uh, we've got 10 positions there. And you'll notice when I flip this over, there's only eight. While the first two didn't make it all the way through. So we know to cut through this material, we need at least 30% power at 600 millimeters per minute. Now the other thing is you really wanna take a look at this and as we get hotter in power, it starts to melt the foam, right? So we don't wanna go with 100% power. What we wanna probably go is 10, 20, 30, 40, maybe 30, 40% power. So our top piece is gonna be just like this, it's gonna be bigger than the, uh, the Cortex. All the other pieces are gonna tuck around it. So I wanna come up with my top piece dimensions and layout first. So what we'll do is we'll simply measure the Cortex. We want this to fit tight, so it just slips over top and you don't need to glue it down or anything like that. So if we go, our width here is 30.3, so we'll do 30 by 40. Okay, so our most typical way of, of uh, using this Cortex is we have a couple plugs on one side, a couple plugs on the other side. So we want to make some slots and this drawing here almost represents the size of it perfectly. So we also need to uh, account for our uh, little LED light there. So I'm going to make a cross. Like that. So that's our position of our light roughly. And we can measure that out as well so it's more accurate. And then just draw our measurements on there. So from the edge of the cortex, we are roughly eight millimeters. And then this direction, we are, that's gonna be a pretty tight measurement, about four. So that gives our perfect location for our laser cutter to cut a hole for us. And then we'll just do a couple slots here for our cables to come through. So we'll do maybe a little square like this. 
Another square like that, kind of a slot, a rectangle slot type thing. Basically, it needs to be big enough to feed our servo lines through. All right, so we've got all of our dimensions done here. We've got our top plate done, and then our sides are fairly straightforward. So one thing to consider is that you're gonna have servo plugs plugged in here, so you wanna have enough height for all that to work. So we've gone with 26 millimeters, which brings it to about here on that servo plug. So from this position to the bottom of the gyro. So our sides are here, 26 millimeters tall, so 60 millimeters long by 26, 30 by 26. Now we can get these cut out. So we're gonna come back to the Lightburn software and we're basically just gonna draw these things out with the different dimension uh, tools and shape tools and everything here. So this is not a how-to on Lightburn and I'm not an expert on this, so I'm just gonna get these roughly done up and we'll see what, uh, what they look like. Now I did mess up when I, I wrote out these measurements. I realized this while I was actually designing it. So I, I did the actual measurements of the Cortex 40 by 30. Uh, I needed to add 10 millimeters and 10 millimeters for the overhang for our side pieces. So we've got 60 by 50. So my goal here is to try and get all these cut out in one pass. Um, I'm trying to maximize the amount of material we get out of this piece. Now, these dimensions here, uh, I think, well, I know we'll be able to fit it in here. Um, if I did it individually, it's gonna be a little bit more of a pain. So. That's what I'm trying to do is to see if we can just do this all in one cut. So that's the goal here. So we've got this laid out on our form. I'm gonna zoom out or our dimensions. And this is the entire dimension that we can cut. And that is located where it is gonna be. So I'm gonna kind of look through our uh, next steps here and see if I can figure this out. We've uh, adjusted our speed to 600 because that's what we did in our test. Our power to 40 and let's hit start and see what happens. I guess first, what we do is we frame it out. So we hit the frame button and you can see the laser moves its head throughout the entire area that it's going to cut or print or do its project. Now we are gonna hit start. And we get to see what happens. So it's doing two passes, I don't know why, but we're just gonna keep it there because I don't wanna interrupt it because we don't have another piece of foam. There we go. All right, so one of the downsides of using a foam cutter, you may be able to see it there, there's a bit of a haze in the air. Well, that is uh, unfortunately what happens when you burn stuff. Okay, so I'm just learning on that tool, but if I was to do that process again, probably would have uh, try and figure out how to only do one pass around stuff because it was doing two passes and uh, some of the pieces moved a little bit. So we may not be, you know, 100% accurate, but we should be able to make this work. Let's pull the pieces out and take a look. All right, well, we pulled all of our pieces out and this worked out really good better than I thought it was going to. So um, I'll just kind of roughly put this together here. I think our measurements are bang on as far as our light goes and all that stuff. But what we need to do now is we need to assemble this. So we will get that put together and then we will slip it, uh, slip the gyro in and see what it looks like. So uh, it's pretty straightforward as far as putting this together. We've got our two side walls and our two end pieces. So that's how we designed it. So let's get this glued together and see what happens. So in checking the fit here, I think it, we accomplished exactly what I set out to do. If I look at my sidewall measurements here, um, if those are run right to the edge of our top piece, it's gonna be a nice tight fit over top of the cortex. So I'm not gonna have the cortex in there while we're gluing it. Just gonna make sure our orientation's correct. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue these pieces on to our top piece. So I'm just gonna make sure I pick my, my best side here. And 
And I think when I made one of these last time, I think I used CA. So we'll use that to glue it together and see what happens. Yes. So because this is dense foam and not your standard white styrofoam material, regular CA works good with the particular foam I'm using. Your results may vary. And I'm not so worried about the outsides here because those I like to sand them down and make them look pretty. So now with the sides done, we will check our fit with our cortex and I think that is good. It's actually gonna sit down at the bottom there like that. And I think our other pieces are perfect. Yes, that is exactly what we are going for. So we'll glue these other pieces in without using our cortex in there. And I'm gonna glue the bottom first and then I will glue both sides separately. Beautiful. So again, I'm not worried about what the, the, what it looks like on the outside yet because we are gonna take that to our grinder and just give it a nice little uh, grind all the way around and we will see what this looks like. So let's check our fit on the Cortex. We'll make, all of our, make sure all of our CA is off and cured. Not that it really matters right now, but that is how our Cortex is gonna fit. And that is awesome. Nice tight fit, no glue required. So let's take this to the grinder and uh, we'll get this cleaned up. So what I'll do with this is I just clean up all, all the sides uh, and then I'll just come in and just bevel all of our angles just to make it look a little bit, uh, a little bit prettier. All right, so final step here for our hush box is I put a piece of tape over top, put some hot glue through, through the base and now we've got a viewer for the color now I actually already did this once, but I managed to, uh, I forgot that I left my glue gun on for a couple days. So the glue that came out was kind of brown. So I had to poke it out and, uh, and redo it. So it actually was a really nice fit before and now it's kind of ugly, but it still works. So, so far with our Creality Falcon 2 laser cutter, we've made a hush box. Uh, now, of course we could do this with just a uh, exacto blade and a, and a ruler and that stuff, but this was really accurate. So, so far, very impressed. All right, so the second project we're working on is something that I've been wanting to do for a while. So sometimes when you put servos in, you need to adjust the spacing. So what I've been doing in the past is putting some washers behind the servo back here to get the servo sitting out further. So I simply wanted to make some spacers that we could install uh, behind the servo and then screw the servo in place to space that servo further away from its mounting point. So I did up a basic diagram here with our measurements. So our actual case measurements plus a little bit on our servo is 42 by 21. Our outside measurement from edge to edge here is uh, 55. The width I haven't really decided on yet, but I want it to be reasonably strong. So if we go with a little bit of excess, so we'll say 27 is our overall width here. And uh, then we've got our holes. I think I'm gonna do the holes up. We'll just do a nice little tiny laser hole, which will be awesome. And I've measured out the spacing on the actual MKS 9930 servos. And it looks like we're 10 millimeters center to center. And then we are 49 millimeters center to center between the two ends. So I'm gonna get this drawn up in light burn and uh, we'll get uh, this going. All right, so we've drawn up eight of these uh, servo uh, backing plates here on the program. And uh, what I've done is the same thing we did with the foam. So I've gone ahead and framed out the area on the wood. Now we've adjusted our temperatures or sorry, our speed and our power based on some previous tests when we first were playing around with this unit. So we should be good to go. This should make it through the wood, no problem. So let's start this program and see. All right, so it took about uh, four, five minutes or so on that setting, but made it through no problem. And those turned out 
Very nice. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Let's check the fit. Okay, so if we were dealing with a different material, I probably would have uh, done a test first, but I was pretty sure that this is gonna work no problem for what we're using it for. There we go. So that is perfect. Our hole spacing is perfect. And that is exactly what I was after for the servo spacer. So that was a fairly easy, quick project. Uh, looking at this now, we could move those holes out just a little bit. So I think we are 49 millimeters center to center. We could move it out to 50, but uh, that won't be a problem at all. Excellent. All right, guys, so some quick little projects with the Falcon 2 laser from Creality. Very nice, quick, easy projects. I'm impressed with how uh, accurate and simple those were to create. Now that we've got the files saved, if I wanna make another hush box for a Cortex gyro, it ends up being a very simple process. I just need another piece of foam basically to do it. And of course, our little servo mounts or back plates slash spacers, uh, those are nice and simple as well to, uh, to pop out. So there's a lot of uses for this laser cutter, including making formers for aircraft, uh, tons of projects. So very excited to be able to dive more into this product. If you guys are interested in checking out this unit, there's a couple links down below in the video description and also in the first comment in the video. If you guys have any questions, list them down below. Again, thank you to Creality for sending us this laser unit to use in the shop. Definitely appreciate it. Thanks for watching the video guys and we'll see you in the next video.